Hello folks, uh, I'm going to do a video today on pipe retorts and pipe retorts are a way of cleaning the pipe, cleaning the internals of the pipe um, and it's sort of a, I kind of I've treated it as a last resort effort uh, because it's, it's involved, uh, it's potentially something that's going to cause problems by uh, potentially damaging the, the finish on the pipe. Uh, but it does work extremely well. So if there's a pipe that is ghosted and the uh, salt and alcohol treatment doesn't work, or if there's a really, um, you know, dirty estate pipe that I, that I want to just be absolutely certain I've cleaned well, uh, I will use the retort. Uh, the, there's a lot of, of good videos on YouTube showing uh, pipe retorts, and there's different styles of them. And I had originally thought of maybe just linking to a couple of those and saying, you know, this is how you do it. But I do it a little differently and I'll explain some of the reasons why and some of the the things that I use that are a little bit different. You don't have to do it this way. I just I it, it's the way that I like to do it and it uh, works well if you've got several pipes to do. It's, you know, kind of a uh, more uh, industrial approach if you will. But uh, the, the the methods that are on YouTube uh, work just fine and I'll try to point out the the differences between those methods and the methods I use and why I use them. So I'm going to try to, this may fail miserably, but I'm going to try to, to draw some things and, and explain things a bit. So the retort, it, the, there's actually, well, a retort is a device that's used to distill uh, solutions. So if you know about uh, stills, stills used to purify alcohol out of uh, a mixture of alcohol plus water and other components, then you, you understand distillation. Uh, basically it's a vessel that can heat a uh, liquid that can then Vapor can, can escape from the vessel and it will condense and drip down into another container. Now technically what we're doing with the pipe is not retorting because we're allowing the solution to drip back into the original chamber. That's technically refluxing, but I'm not going to get too tied up in the semantics. It's been called retorting for quite some time now, so we'll, can, we'll use retort. So I'll insert a picture here of a, um, of a retort apparatus which is used in, in uh, chemical labs. So you get an idea of, of what that looks like. And I'll also probably install in, insert a picture of a uh, still, just to, well, just to have a picture of a still in the video really more than anything. Okay, so basically what we, what we need to do is we need to heat alcohol. And to do that, we're gonna have some kind of a flask. And there are many videos and, and many uh, retort systems that use test tubes or some that use small volumetric flasks or some variation on that. I like to use a larger flask. I'm actually using um, what's called an Erlenmeyer flask. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a sort of triangular shaped flask. And I just put a little bit of alcohol on the bottom of that. Now the reason I like to do it that way is that I'm I like to just have vapor coming up into the pipe. And I'll explain that as we go along. But that's a key difference between the method that I'm using and the smaller test tube type versions. I also like to use this because I use the same system to create steam that I'll sometimes use to uh, steam dents out of briar. So it's just nice to have only one piece of glassware that I have to keep in the shop and uh, it's pretty easy to set up. Uh, in terms of the ethanol or, or the alcohol that you use, there's a couple of different uh, possible choices. So what I'm using is essentially a 95% ethanol and that's Everclear. Uh, I know my handwriting is probably not great but hopefully it, it uh, is coming across. Uh, you can also use uh, probably 95 to 99% isopropanol. Now these, uh, you can get the isopropanol at, at the drugstore, you can get it up to 99%. Uh, what you buy as, as rubbing alcohol, I believe, is something around 70%, so that's not going to be as ideal. Um, and anything that you would get in terms of spirits, like um, vodka or gin or something like that, is going to be 50% or less. So those are even less ideal, and uh, we'll, we'll talk a bit about why. Things you want to avoid, uh, do not use methanol. 
it's available at the drugstore, it's cheap, and it's also highly toxic. It will cause blindness and liver damage and all kinds of nasty things, and it can kill you. Also, do not use anything that is denatured. Denatured ethanol, uh, which is used as uh, camp fuel and used to thin uh, lacquer uh, to dissolve shellac, uh, again, available at the drugstore. This is denatured by the addition of methanol and other nasty uh, substances that are put in there primarily to prevent people from drinking it uh, because it's not taxed in the same way as alcohol. So do not use anything that's denatured. I highly recommend Everclear if you can get it. Uh, isopropanol is a, a reasonable substitute and it works fine. It just, I, I think it, I don't like the smell of it really. By the time you smoke the pipe, the, the isopropanol is gone, so there's no flavor uh, imparted, but I just don't like the smell of isopropanol. Uh, so you have a flask with a bit of, of uh, alcohol in it, and then you need a heat source. And for the heat source, you can use a candle. You know, something like a little tea light candle works just fine, and uh, that's a perfectly uh, reasonable way to do this. Uh, I use an alcohol lamp, as I've shown in other videos. And the alcohol lamp is nice because since it's burning primarily alcohol, there's much less soot that's deposited on the glassware. So in general, I try to avoid the candle uh, just because I don't want to have to clean the soot off the bottom, but both work fine. Okay, so we, we have a way of, of heating up some alcohol in a glass flask, and the glass is, it's very important that this glass be um, borosilicate. Uh, and the name brand that you've probably seen is Pyrex, although there's other borosilicates that you can get. Don't just use any container, any flask. Um, this is really important because the heat that you're using here is not that great, okay? This is a relatively gentle flame, relatively soft heat source. But the problem is because there's a liquid on this side of the glass, that's going to be a heat sink. So as the heat is applied to the outside of this glass, the outside is going to heat up more quickly than the inside. The inside surface, the heat is going to be lost to the solution. And what that means is the outer surface is going to expand more quickly than the inner surface. And that can create a thermal stress across the glass and potentially crack it if it's not a, a tempered glass like Pyrex. That's not terrible. It's not going to explode or anything, but it is going to dump a flammable liquid on top of a flame on top of your table. Probably not a situation that you'd uh, want to be involved in if you could avoid it. To get the, once the alcohol starts boiling, it's going to convert to a vapor in this chamber, and to get that out, we need to have some sort of a tube, and that tube is going to be inserted through a stopper of some sort. It can be a cork, it can be a rubber stopper. If you decide to go the path of a rubber stopper, try to find one that uh, already has a hole in it, because it's difficult to put holes in rubber stoppers. Much easier to put them in cork, but of course the cork isn't going to last as long. And then on that, we're going to have a bit of uh, latex tubing. And this is going to be sealed completely. So you know, this is, these are all airtight connections. And that latex tubing is going to go on to our pipe stem. An artist I am not. Uh, so the latex tubing, it has to make a tight seal onto the stem, and it has to make a tight seal onto the, uh, to the tube here. Lastly, we need some way to prevent the alcohol from boiling up over the top of the pipe and causing us problems um, with the alcohol getting on the, the finish. And what a lot of people will do is they'll just put uh, cotton, uh, cotton balls or bowls or, you know, there, there's regional differences in how that's spelled, but pieces of, of cosmetic uh, cotton stuffed into the bowl. And that works fine. I'm actually going to use a device. Uh, it, it's basically a cork with a tube for refluxing. And don't worry about what that means. I'll show you it in a moment. So those are the basic things you need. Now, in terms of the choice of alcohol, I wanted to talk a little bit about this because if you have... So, so let's start with water as a reference. So water is going to boil at about... 212, well it's not about 212, it's 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, sorry, I don't know uh, what that is in Celsius, uh, so you'll have to convert on your own. 
95% ethanol will boil at a much lower temperature than that. And it is, I'm looking at a note that I made, it is 172 degrees Fahrenheit. So water boils at a lower temperature than, than uh, I'm sorry, alcohol boils at a lower temperature than water. And that's why distillation works. So you have a mixture of alcohol and water, you set it on a flame and it starts to boil, and the alcohol is going to convert to a vapor at a lower temperature than the water is going to convert to a vapor, and therefore you can collect the alcohol away from the water. If you're using 95% alcohol, then the vapor is going to be uh, approximately 95% alcohol. Okay, so, so that's good. Now, people will tell you that you cannot use something like vodka, and they're right and wrong about that. So vodka, the, and, and the reason is not because the boiling point is different. So vodka is 50, uh, well, most vodkas are about 80 proof, so they're going to be about 40% water. Um, so let's just, I'm sorry, they'll be about 60% water. So let's say that is 40% ethanol. So 40% ethanol will boil at a slightly higher temperature, but it's 179 degrees. So that is not vastly different from 172, and it's still quite a bit below the boiling point of water. So you are going to be able to boil this using a relatively gentle flame. The catch, though, is that because there's an odd relationship between water and alcohol, they form what's called an azeotropic mixture, and you don't need to know what that means or even remember that word. Uh, but because they do this, and because you cannot ever distill ethanol down to 100%, which is why you should never drink 100% ethanol, it's got something else in it, um, the, the vapor that you get boiling something like vodka is actually going to be closer to about 80%. So what does that mean? That means that if you're using 95% ethanol, 5% of your vapor is going to be water. Okay, so you're going to get some water in your pipe. If you're using 40% ethanol, then 20% of your vapor is going to be water. So you're going to get some water in your pipe. You're going to get more. So the briar is going to get wetter. Uh, and it's going to hold that moisture longer because the ethanol will evaporate very quickly, whereas the water will take a longer time to evaporate. So can you use vodka to retort a pipe if you can't get ever clear, if you don't want to use isopropanol? Yeah, I think you can. I personally have not done it, but I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work. 80% is still a high enough percentage to certainly uh, clean the pipe. The catch is you're going to have to wait longer for it to dry. Um, it shouldn't be a big deal. I wouldn't recommend really smoking a pipe after retort for at least a few days, and I'd probably go about a week. So by then, I think it would be fine. Again, I haven't tried it, but I'm just letting you know that in terms of boiling point, that's not the reason not to use it. The reason not to use it is that you're adding more water to the briar, and it will just take longer for it to, to, uh, to equilibrate back to normal relative humidity. Okay, that's enough science. What does the retort actually look like? So let me get this out of the way. So I am using this flask, and uh, these you can get just about all of these parts that I'm going to show you uh, from Scientific Surplus Supplies. Uh, there's a couple of them available on the internet. There's also uh, eBay is a good source for some of these things. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to to that uh, to to the scientific supply that I use, and you can you can piece one of these together yourself. There is also uh, a couple of different retorts that are for sale on eBay, and if you poke around the internet, you'll find others. Uh, and if you're going to buy one, there's one that that is put out by a group called SUNA, SUNA. Uh, that's an animal rescue organization, so all the proceeds for the sale of those uh, go to the animal rescue, so that's a good cause. There's also one that, uh, I, I don't have any experience with them, but they, uh, they appear to support the Wounded Warrior Project, which is a project for uh, wounded veterans. So if you're interested in supporting a good cause and buying a retort, that's, uh, that's a reasonable place to start looking. So we are using uh, this glass flask, 
And the reason I like to use that again is that it just provides a lot of volume to build up the vapor without bubbling alcohol directly into the pipe. And if you watch the videos on the smaller retorts, and there, there's some very good ones, uh, if you use the, the smaller test tube type retorts, you'll see that you're actually bubbling liquid ethanol up into the pipe. Using this method, you're restricting yourself to bubbling ethanol, well, not bubbling, but, but flowing ethanol vapor into the pipe. So the larger chamber really helps a lot with that. You need a, um, a stopper, and the stopper is placed in the top. It needs to be an airtight seal. This is a rubber stopper. And I actually have a um, plastic tube that I put through it uh, that the uh, tubing, and this is a latex hose actually, I said silicone earlier, but this is this is actually latex and I'll show you the, uh, let's see if I can get that to focus. The light might be a bit too bright for it, yeah there we go. So it's uh, three, what is that, three eighths outer diameter, one quarter inch inner diameter. The inner diameter is important, uh, so a quarter inch inner diameter fits over the stem of the pipe quite well, and stem of most pipes quite well. You can get this at uh, Home Depot, Ace Hardware, or any of those places. You can pick it up on eBay. You can get it from the scientific uh, the scientific surplus sites as well. If you are going to buy this, uh, Home Depot only sells it in 10 foot lengths, and it's rather costly. It's about 250 per foot. So I'd recommend going to some place like Ace Hardware where you can buy it by the foot or buying it uh, somewhere online where you can get a smaller piece of it because a foot will last for quite a while. This is only about uh, three or four inches. So that goes in there. This is heated on an alcohol lamp and you've seen those before. And you'll, you'll see this in action on the, uh, at the end of the video when I actually use the retort. And then of course you need a pipe that you're going to retort. Uh, this is just a, one of my knock-around billiards, but uh, it has been cleaned. I just, I just took this through what I call the deep cleaning process that I do probably about every six months on my pipes. So it's been reamed, uh, it's been, you know, the, the internals have been scrubbed with uh, bristled pipe cleaners and ethanol, swabbed out with non-bristled pipe cleaners. Uh, the stem has been cleaned up and everything. So this is basically ready to go back into the rotation and it's as clean as I typically get them. And I'm purposely using this to show you how well the retort works at getting additional stuff out of the pipe. So we've got that. Now the last thing we need to do is somehow plug this so that we're not bubbling ethanol up over the sides and ruining the finish on the pipe. What most people do is they put cotton balls down into the pipe, not all the way to the base because you, you want to be able to get hot ethanol on the uh, the heel to uh, the, the inside to uh, actually clean any gunk out of that because that's where a lot of the cake is going to hold flavor and, and call, lead to ghosting. Um, but you, you want it to be tight enough that you're not allowing stuff to condense on the rim and bubble out. And I've always found that that's actually kind of difficult. You can only keep this on for a short period of time until you start to see condensation of ethanol on the rim if you use the, um, the cotton balls. So what I actually have done is I've made this little um, reflux device. So it's basically a glass tube in a cork. And this cork has been uh, sanded down so that it fits in the tobacco chamber of most pipes. Um, I, I think this is um, about 0.9 inches and it drops down to, I think, 0.6 inches. So it, it covers a pretty broad range. And that will just seat nice and tightly in there. And what this does is it directs the ethanol vapor up through the glass tube. So the, the, the vapor will condense in here and it'll drop down into the bowl without ever touching the finish. So this is a very safe way to do it. So to use this, um, I guess the last thing I'm going to show you here before taking you over to the video, actually showing the retort in action, is how to connect the pipe to this. There's a couple different ways you can do this. Um, I find the easiest way is to roll the tubing back like this first. Okay, so I just kind of rolled that back. It's doubled back on itself. Now what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of, um, I've got some water here, and just a little bit on my finger just to wet it, just to wet the very end of the bowl there. And that'll help this slide in like so. And then once you've got it um, inserted in, you can flip this rolled over piece down. 
and that's going to form a very nice tight seal against the the, the button. Uh, some people will put a, a zip tie around this or a zip tie around here. I have not found that to be necessary at all. One thing I will say is that on some pipes, in particular pipes that have uh, filter inserts, you can get some leaking around the um, junction between the stem and the shank. So to prevent that from being an issue and from uh, harming the finish, what I will do is if I suspect, and on this pipe I don't, but if I suspect that could be a problem, I will use a bit of this uh, just standard Teflon tape that you can get at any uh, hardware or plumbing supply. Uh, it's, it's not sticky at all, but it does stick to itself through friction. And I'll, sh I'll show you. Let me just grab the scissors here. Scissors. So I'll just quickly show you this because it's, it's worth knowing this trick. And if you want to be absolutely certain, that you're not going to have a problem here, you can do this. Um, just tightly wrapping this, and it will not stick to the pipe, it will not affect the finish, but it will stick to itself, and it, it fills gaps very effectively, so really that's going to seal that junction pretty well. You're not going to have to worry about ethanol coming out through there. It's going to take the path of least resistance, which is going to be up into the stumble. I'm not going to leave that on because uh, this pipe is fine. Um, the, the junction is fine on it. Okay, so we're ready to go then. So I will uh, now take you over to the uh, place where I'm going to do the retorting and show you how this works. All right, guys, here we go with the, uh, the retort video. So I've got everything set up as I described earlier. Uh, I've got the alcohol lamp here. The flask is set up in this, this holder. Uh, it's actually being held up just uh, by a machinist stand. Uh, it's a magnetic stand. It's obviously not uh, magnetized right now because it's on a granite surface plate, but it's, uh, it's stable enough for what we're doing. The pipe's attached and the, um, the cork is in place with the reflux tube. So I will go ahead and during this whole process I'm going to be holding the pipe, but uh, to light the lamp I'll have to move things off to the side. As I'm doing that, uh, please note that I've got a ceramic uh, tile here. It's on a granite surface plate. I'm being really careful to do this away from anything flammable. Uh, if you're doing this on your own, it might be a good idea to do it outdoors the first couple times. I've never had an issue with these, and if you follow the uh, directions, in particular if you use uh, a Pyrex or borosilicate glass, you should not have any problem. But safety first. Uh, and if you've got a fire extinguisher handy, that's uh, that's only going to uh, be safe. All right, so I'm going to hold the pipe and uh, hope that it's still in shot. And the reason I'm holding it is that I actually want to be able to feel the temperature of the um, the tobacco chamber, the stummel. I don't want it to overheat. So let's just move the flame underneath and you will see it doesn't take very long for the alcohol to begin to boil it has a you know relative a low boiling point at least relative to water uh, I believe it's around 170 degrees Fahrenheit uh, so it, it will boil up pretty quickly plus it's a relatively small volume in there and the idea of this is that as it boils the vapor is going to exit through the top uh, go into the pipe and condense and then um, once it condenses and we remove the heat, there will be a vacuum formed as the, the, the air and the, well, the vapor and the liquid cools in the flask, and that vacuum will draw the alcohol back out of the pipe, and we'll help that along by tilting the, the pipe up as well. But right now I'm just holding it, uh, I don't think the position is really all that important. You, you may want to try to keep it level. I'm just trying to reach around and see if I can... Nope, I'm out of the shot there. So I'll have to keep it in here. Waiting for uh, alcohol to boil is not exactly exciting video, I understand. But it will, it will come along quickly. The volume, I'm not sure of. I just add about that much. It's basically one little splash of, of alcohol. Uh, it's probably, you know, 10 to 15 milliliters 
I have no idea what that would be in ounces, but uh, less than a shot, maybe about a half shot glass. You don't need that much. You can see we're starting to get some uh, movement there. Some small bubbles are forming. Now with this kind of setup, you can actually have, there we go, you can allow it to boil pretty uh, vigorously and not have to worry about the alcohol uh, pouring out and affecting the pipe. With the smaller setups, uh, which, which work fine, one of the worries that you have is that you're actually splashing hot alcohol into the stem of the pipe and that can flow over and, and cause damage to the finish. So I really prefer this method where it's just vapor. And I can hear it gurgling now. I'm watching the reflux tube. Looking to see if there's any condensation forming on that tube. And I don't know how well the camera's picking this up, but you can see there's some gurgling here in the tubing as well. The tubing is certainly warm, the stem is warm. The stumble is still relatively cool to the touch. Now again, with this setup, I can boil this for much longer than I would if I had a small test tube or a small vial that was you know, halfway or more full of liquid. Um, I also have less of a worry about the alcohol overflowing, so that's good. The reflux tube is beginning to get warm now, so that's telling me that the vapor is definitely getting up to the to the uh, tobacco chamber. And the things we're trying to clean here are the shank of the pipe, the stem, and the heel of the tobacco chamber. Um, that That's really the main thing that we're, we're shooting for. So if we're getting hot vapor in the tobacco chamber, we're doing our job. So at this point, because this is hot, I can feel some steam escaping, I'm going to pull the heat away and allow this to cool. And hopefully I'm still in shot. And as it cools it will often create a vacuum. I'm going to tilt it up a bit just to help it. And there you go. Now remember this was a cleaned pipe. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is just to make sure that things are getting into shot. I'm going to let this rest for just a moment, which I normally would not do. I'm going to zoom out a bit. Oops, that's zooming in. Just to make sure we're getting a full shot here. And we'll send it through for another, another round. Now you can do this as many times as you want. Um, typically, I mean, a pipe like this where I know that it's relatively clean, I'll, I'll do it, you know, three times and, and I'll be happy. Uh, this pipe did not need to be retorted, I'm just doing it for demonstration. But uh, if it were an estate pipe, you know, something that had a bad ghost, I might do it three times and then replace the alcohol and do it another three times. You're never going to get clean alcohol, it's never going to come out white, uh, clear. Uh, because you've got cake in the pipe and, and whatnot, so there's always going to be something that can color the alcohol. Uh, but it should be a bit clearer than, than what we see. And uh, certainly we are pulling tars and oils out of the briar. And out of the cake as well, which is a source of a lot of the, um, the flavors associated with ghosting. It's more about the cake than the pipe itself, than the briar. Okay, again, I'm starting to feel that that retort tube is hot and I'm seeing a little bit of steam flux out so I will pull this out and I'm going to hold this level and hopefully this time you'll see the vacuum action working I didn't do it the first time around because I didn't want to uh, put the pipe out of shot there we go you can see it's drawing a vacuum just pulling that solution right back out again and once it starts to do that we can help it out just by tilting it Okay, let that cool off for a moment or two and we will give it one more shot. Now, a 
couple of things to note here, the, um, or at least one thing to note. The, the concern about reusing this alcohol, so should you swap this out and put fresh alcohol in now, um, that is not necessary. And the reason it's not necessary is that, remember, this is basically a distillation process. So the reason the alcohol is boiling uh, is that it has a low boiling temperature. And if this were, for example, if this were 50%, uh, you know, something like vodka, we would be able to isolate the ethanol by boiling it off, uh, leaving behind the water. Likewise, we can leave behind the dirt and the oils and the tars. Uh, so by, by using a distillation method, we're actually, although the, the alcohol in the flask is dirty, what's bubbling back up through the pipe right now is uh, relatively pure alcohol. And I say relatively pure because distillation is not a 100% and the truth is that it's impossible to, to fully distill alcohol away from water, so there's always going to be some water vapor that, that carries along as well. Okay, it's once again getting warm. Once you start this process, it goes pretty quickly because the alcohol's already warmed up and you don't have to worry so much about you know, taking time to, to boil it. The one thing you would want to avoid with this, I think the biggest danger, would be boiling that flask dry. So if you were to set the pipe in some sort of a stand or something and walk away, uh, the flask could boil dry and then it could crack. Also, uh, I don't like to do that just because I like to feel the temperature of the stummel. And it will heat up. Uh, I mean, this is, this is about as warm as it gets when I'm smoking it. So uh, I know that we're, we're doing the job here. And the, the reflux tube is getting quite hot to the touch. So I'm going to call that the last time. I'll pull the flame out. Once again, hold this up a bit and let the vacuum form. And the vacuum is, is forming because that gas and vapor is, is collapsing down in volume and we'll be pulling air and liquid back with it. There we go. And tilt it up for the final. Now, this pipe, as I said, was thoroughly cleaned. This was basically, had just been through the deep cleaning process that I usually use on uh, pipes about uh, twice a year. So it had been reamed, scrubbed out with pipe cleaners and alcohol, uh, then swabbed with, with dry cleaners. Uh, the stem's been cleaned. The, this, is, this pipe was ready to be smoked, and you can see the retort still was able to pull quite a bit out of it. Now, this is my pipe, uh, so I'm not too concerned about what the retort pulled out of it. Um, it mostly pulled out things that would be affecting the flavor of the tobacco. And since I'm smoking the tobaccos in this pipe that I like, I probably don't notice those flavors. But if this was a pipe that belonged to someone else and they were a heavy aromatic smoker and I'm not, you know, this might be all of the aromatic oils that I've extracted and therefore this pipe is going to be much cleaner and smoke much better. So when I'm done, I take the pipe off. I'm going to remove, as soon as it's cool enough, I'm going to remove the cork and set that down. Now, the one thing that I'm not going to do, set it down like that, is I am not going to take the pipe apart for some time because I have to let it cool down. Just like after you smoke a pipe, you don't take it apart. After you retort it, you don't take it apart. But there is some alcohol in the uh, in the pipe still that I'd like to get out. So I need to walk over to the other side of the room to where I left the pipe cleaners that I intended to bring with me. Sorry about that. Uh, so I will take the pipe cleaner and run it through the stem. And you can see how clean that came out. This is the part that was in the bowl, uh, touching the cake. But really, there's there's nothing in that bowl, in that uh, stem rather. And now I will use this to swab out the, the bowl a bit. Uh, again, I just don't want to leave a lot of alcohol in there. Hopefully, you can see this. I apologize if I'm getting out of shot. Uh, and remember, there's cake in here, so it's going to come out with carbon on it. But uh, this is now a very very clean pipe. So, I will let that cool for at least an hour or two. Um, 
and then I'll put it in the rack. I will not smoke this for probably at, at minimum, I mean I probably won't smoke it for a week, but at minimum you want to give it two or three days just to let that alcohol fully evaporate and uh, allow everything to kind of equilibrate. But uh, that's it. That's the retort method. Uh, that's how to get a super clean pipe and uh, you know really works great for cleaning up estate pipes. As I said earlier, I personally use it as a last resort uh, just because it's it's involved and, and not really necessary most of the time. But the times when it's needed, the times when you have a persistent ghost, the times when you've got a really grubby estate pipe that you want to clean up, it's, it's a wonderful method and it works uh, beautifully. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment, uh, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Take care.